Hey, it's Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. I make videos on all things lifestyle on a budget and I'm so excited to bring you another showdown. This time I am going to be comparing some makeup. We've got high end versus low end and I wanna find out which one is really worth the hype. Should you be spending all that money and getting something fancy and nice because it's gonna last and it's probably better formula, better made, all of that? Or is it better to just use something that's ultra affordable so you don't have to really think much about it and you just kinda hope for the best that it is good quality? We're gonna find that out in this video, so let's get into it. As you all know, I have a performance coming up and makeup is very important for the show. I wanna make sure that I've got a foundation that's gonna last, that's gonna stick. You don't see that many foundation makeup videos from me on this channel because it is a journey trying to find the right shade for me. I'm always usually in between like a warm and a neutral. I believe I am neutral, but sometimes I end up getting matched warm. Another person suggested I had like olive undertones. I don't know, I can't explain it. It just is what it is. But it kind of always falls in the in-between where something always looks a little too yellow, a little too orange, or it's just way too light for me. So let's get into the brands that I'm gonna be working with. You probably already saw it in the title of the video, but I'm gonna be comparing Dior foundation to e.l.f. Cosmetics. Now, I happen to love e.l.f. e.l.f. has been a ride or die from way long ago. If y'all remember the $1 products, the $3 products. I knew I was going to look into e.l.f. for my low end, but I wasn't sure for my high end. I ended up choosing Dior foundation after a recommendation from a friend. And I will say in terms of shade matches, I was pleasantly surprised to find that Dior had a wide range. The Dior matte foundation was $54. I've never spent that much on foundation, ever. Just, wow. The compact, which I have questions, the compact was $60. 60? Why? Less product. Is it for the mirror and the little sponge? Cause, so I was already like, okay, but if it's amazing, it's amazing and we'll just deal with that. But I also went home and went online to e.l.f. Cosmetics. I had seen their camo line in Ulta, but they didn't always have the shades, which another thing that's kind of annoying. The e.l.f. camo powder ended up being $5.50. It's originally $11, but I told you deals on deals. And then the CC cream was $7.50, but it originally is $15. And on both ends, the Dior and the e.l.f. Cosmetics were boasting about you know long wear, no transfer, anything like that. So I will be testing that out as well in the video so you can see. So let's get into the experience, application, wear test, etc., and figure out which one of these is better. Is it better to go high end or to stick with the low end? The lights in our dressing room are very dreamy, very forgiving, but here's my face without any makeup on. And I'll do a little close up so you can see that I have different shades within my skin. Um, and here is the powder foundation. I wanted to do a quick uh, swatch of the 4N so you can see it pretty much just blends right in. And here is the liquid foundation from Dior. I was shade matched in store. We went with 4W. I kind of was thinking I should probably do 4N, but we'll see the differences. So I'm just gonna do a quick swatch here. You can see it is a little bit warm on my skin, but let's see what I can do with it. I do like to set my primer. This has no color in it, so it's not gonna affect how my makeup ends up turning out. And as you can see almost instantly, it is pretty yellow on my skin, but I'm hoping that after it blends and everything like that, it'll settle in nicely. By all means, if you are a foundation expert, hop in those comments, let's chit chat. Um, but this kind of always is the case with my foundations. It just ends up being a little darker at first, and then I just try to like smooth it out. Here you can see the difference um, between the side that's not done and the one that is. It's so slight, except for the areas where I do have um, a darker tint, so like where the sun hits more, basically. I eventually went in with the powder to kind of cool things down a bit, and then I put on the rest of my makeup to just you know get the full look for the stage. I was pretty happy with it overall. And then here's some different lights, so it kind of tricks you. But then this is much later, and this is where I could see what I think was a bit of oxidizing. Okay, so I just got home, and um, I'm going to keep the makeup on because I'm going to dinner tonight. And I'm so original, I'm literally going to just wear this exactly as is. 
um laziness the more looking at my foundation it is like a tinge yellow which i think is because it's the 4w so it's warmer and i can see a slight difference obviously you can see it more so in my neck i think i should have maybe gone with the 4n but this was under the advice of um the person that did my makeup and i'm debating if i should go return it this is where i talk about how my skin tone just like waves in between where maybe the 4n might look more pale on me but i think it would be true to what is you know going on down here it is fine for the stage because the stage is going to be much more dramatic and my makeup will be much more dramatic when we actually get to performances the best thing about it is that a little goes a long way you know i want to get my money's worth i did blow my nose and so i could see some separation on there if we're gonna get specific and i also it was freezing outside so obviously right here i think i have some separation with the foundation for sure. I'll do like a little powder before I go out, but even my lip color kind of stayed on. This is Mented, it's the best neutral for me ever. I'm absolutely obsessed with it, Mented Cosmetics. I believe it's like, ooh la la or something like that. Okay, I just got home, I literally still have my jacket on. It's like nine o'clock now, so I'm technically like almost at 12 hours. This is where the makeup is at. I'll get some close-ups so you can see. So there's a little bit of some like you know shininess but also i've been like outside and all that um but coverage is still like pretty much there it says like it's long wear and doesn't transfer but it definitely does transfer forgot how gross that looks but that is my dior foundation and dior powder review mini elf haul let's just talk about the fact that i bought a bunch of products and end up only being like 32 dollars and that doesn't even add up to one of the foundations from dior so come on elf you're already like my fave this primer definitely threw me off it is called power grip and you definitely feel that grip it's just very sticky so just know that if you are interested in it i liked it but i just wasn't expecting that and here's a little close-up of the cc cream this camo foundation shade is 370 neutral. So this one is a neutral, but this is a different brand. So obviously I am seeing a little bit of a tint here, a little bit of a yellowing, but maybe it'll even out. I really do love that this is a CC cream, but it's giving me full coverage. I can definitely get used to that. And now I'm going in with the powder, which is definitely a little bit warmer, but again, we're gonna just test it out and see if we can get some more evenness and get the tones to match a little bit better. Here is the final look. I was pretty happy with it overall. And here's just a quick outside shot, but the remainder of the video, I'm wearing this foundation so you could see it up close. Here's my final review, and based off my outfit, yes, I am now wearing the Elf CC Cream. This has been on since before 10 in the morning. It's now 5 in the evening, so however many hours later. It's held up so well. I'm so impressed. What I will say to start it off for both of the foundations is that I never put a finishing spray on. I wanted to see how the products would act within themselves, and both products did really stay pretty much intact. Now, yes, sometimes I had my mask on, sometimes I blew my nose and the product did come off, but in terms of like shine or oiliness, they did really well. Very, very happy with both of them. They did a really awesome job. I felt like this one did match my skin tone a little bit better. As you saw when I was putting it on, it seems like it was a little bit lighter, but it did blend in, and I think that it did stay true to my skin tone. Now, yes, the price is massively cheaper, but I will say that the bottle isn't as big, but I definitely could buy a ton of those and still not go up to the price of the more expensive one. The powder was actually really good too. It gave good coverage. I would say it's slightly darker than the CC cream, but I still felt like it blended in well, as you can see. Overall, this was a really fun experiment. They both held up very well on their own. For someone that's oily, it was refreshing to not have to go like this like every five seconds throughout the day. Best thing in the world for me is that it stays intact. I love that. If I have rehearsal all day and then I have like an event later on, I love that I could literally just keep it on. And it didn't really look crappy or anything like that. Other than when, again, I blew my nose or when I wore my mask or something like that, then it's gonna, you know, disappear. So who wins in the end? 
I'm gonna say Elf. You know me. You know this is a budget channel. Of course, I'm gonna you know want to cut corners somewhere in there. I do think that the Dior did live up to its hype in and of itself. That is my review. Let's have a chit chat down below. Tell me the foundation that you love. If you are someone that has trouble finding foundations, I would say check out e.l.f. Had a quite a good range. Check out Dior. Dior did have quite a good range. If you're having a holiday week, I hope you enjoy it so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.